A rational consumer should choose the combination of goods that will maximize his utility given the income limitation. However, there are other utility determinants besides income that will also affect the decision making of consumer on his consumption. The first inquiry to add such other utility determinants into our demand function was suggested by Professor Oscar Magersten in his article, Demand Theory Reconsidered. He concluded in his paper that after examining the relationship between individual demand and collective demand curves, in some cases the market demand curve is not the horizontal summation of the individual demand curves. This is because of the existence of non-additivity elements that cannot be reflected in the individual demand curve but strongly visible in the market demand curve. Even still later, write up and talk about the non-functional demand of the commodity and introduce a solution to inculcate the non-functional non element of the demand in driving a more accurate and reflective market demand from individual demand curves. Because in great scrutiny, the bandwagon, snow and problem effect in the theory of consumer's demand. We will briefly introduce the three behaviors and how earlier economists treated and translated this behavior into consumer's preference to consumption decision before analyzing further how this behavior affects the derivation of consumer's demand curve. Now, let's talk about the snob, bandwagon, and Vemlin effect. Most economic models assume that individual utility function is not being influenced by the behavior of others. Our report says otherwise. We can see that an individual preferences is heavily influenced by his past behavior as well as others' behavior in consumption. Consumers' demand is not only derived from its functionality or the quality of the commodity. There are also other non-functional effects on the demand for the commodity. There are are classified into three, which are external effects on utility, speculative, and irrational. And we will only emphasize heavily on the first category, which is external effects on utility. The external effects on utility is further divided into three, which is snob effect, bandwagon effect, and Vemblin effect. Now let's start with the Vemblin effect. Vemblin effects are said to exist when consumers exhibit a willingness to pay a higher price for a functionality equivalent good arise from the desire to signal wealth. Hence, utility is derived not from the price of the commodity, but rather the status derived from a consumption of that certain commodity. Basically, its aim is to have what others can't have. Now let's talk about the snob effect. Snob effects refers to when a consumer prefers exclusive goods by decreasing his demand for the fact that others are also also consuming the same commodity. This behavior represents the desire to be different and to be dissociated with the common herd. Although it may seem similar to the Vemlin effect, it is different since Vemlin effect is a function of price while snob effect is a function of consumption of others. Moving on to the third effect. Bandwagon effect explains the behavior of not wanting to be left out from the society. In economics, we refer to bandwagon effect as an increase in demand due to other people are also consuming the same commodity. In conclusion, nowadays it is widely recognized that consumer purchases products mainly because of social value rather than its utility. While there is no denying for goods that have qualities such as functional and practical are necessary, buyers also tend to look into the social status and prestige that can be obtained through their purchase choices. It is further confirmed that social influence is a significant on consumer behavior. In recent years, people regard bandwagon effect as a positive externality since it creates more demand as more people consume the commodity, and Vemlin the snob effect as negative externalities since the end result in the market of snob people will decrease in total demand when the availability of the product in the market is high. Okay, so now let's talk about snob, bandwagon, and Vemlin effect in the consumer's demand theory. From the previous explanation, we understand that consumer demand is not only a function of price, but it is, but it is also dependent on network externalities which we classified further into three types. The three types of network externalities are the bandwagon effect, the snob effect, and the Veblen effect. The bandwagon effect is also called as positive network externalities because as more people demand it for the commodity, individual demand for the same commodity also increases. People that possess this quality likes to be similar with the society and hates to be left out. The second one is the snob effect, also called as negative network externalities because as more people demand for the commodity, the individual demand for the item will decrease. Snobs like to be exclusive and will have more satisfaction if the item he consumes is the only one that exists in the market. The third one is the Veblen effect. 
This is, exp this is explained in the demand for luxury commodities when, as price increases, individual demand also increases. Even though we can see Veblen effect and snob effect are similar, but they are a little bit different. Snob effect is dependent on the number of commodity demand in the market, regardless of price. However, Veblen effect is dependent solely on the price of the luxury item itself. Snob induced demand curve is still downward sloping, while the demand for commodity that is used for conspicuous consumption is upward sloping. Now let's look at them in details. We are going to first look at the bandwagon effect. Uh, to analyze this in the diagram, we have to assume two things. The first assumption is that every individual knows the quantity demanded by all individuals collectively, or we can say that every individual knows the quantity, the market quantity demanded at any given price. And the second assumption is that a particular individual has complete preferences, whereby he knows exactly how much he would demand for certain commodities, which in turn give him the highest utility. The functional demand for the commodity with respect to price at given quantity demanded A, B, C, D, and N is denoted by curve D A, D B, D C, and continuously to D N. To explain, D A refers to the collective demand of individuals if the quantity demanded for a commodity is A units. Points E A, E B, and, to, um, and further to E N that lies on the demand curve represent the amounts on which the consumer based their individual demand curves or the amounts that consumer expected to be the total market demand when the demand for the commodity. And the locus of these points, the E points on the D curve, uh, is therefore the actual demand curve for, a com for the commodity and we can see that it is more elastic. The effects. The total effect in this bandwagon present market as prices decrease from P1 to P2, quantity demanded moves from A quantity to C. But the price effect on the demand when price fall is X minus A units and the remaining is the bandwagon effect. At X units, since individual perceive that C much people is demanding for the commodity, at price level P2, his demand shift his demand curve shift to DC to get C units quantity demanded in the market. Now let's analyze snob effect in the diagram. One example uh, for the snob effect includes traffic congestion, whereby individual would yield higher utility if he stopped demanding for the same route demanded as well by lots of people. In the diagram, this behavior can be seen by a shift of demand curve downwards as the individual assumes there are more people demanding for the same item. As price falls to P1, there is a movement along DA curves and the quantity demanded increases to X units. The total increase in quantity demanded X minus A units is the total effect when price falls in the market. However, since the snob feels less superior as more people demand for the same commodity, some snobs decided to not demand for the goods. Thus, we can see a shift uh, from point at curve DA when price is at P1 to curve DB. The last one is the Veblen effect. In the Veblen effect, we see that the market demand for the luxury items is a lateral summation of all individuals that demand for this commodity at one expected conspicuous price. Therefore, as expected conspicuous prices increases, we can observe that the demand curve will shift to the right. Uh, the meaning is that there is more demand for the luxury item as its expected conspicuous prices increases. Uh, but we can see as price falls to P3, the functional effect or the price effect can be shown with a movement along D4 curve. Individuals may expect lesser conspicuous price of P3 and therefore they will reduce their demand by a shift to the left to D3 curve. Now let's talk about the issues regarding the externalities theories. We highlighted several issues in our term paper, but just let's just go through them one by one. A Vemlin good is a good or services whose demand increases as its price increases. Vemlin goods are very expensive products. Examples are like jewelry, one-of-a-kind watches, expensive cars. The whole objective of the Vemlin effect is basically you want to show your superiority of wealth to others by purchasing these expensive goods. Now when you do this, this will show an indication that you have wealth and this will increase the probability of crime being inflicted on you. So this is one of the issues of the Vemlin effect that it encourages crimes to be committed because you are practicing this conspicuous consumption. 
Now these negative effects are known by the people who practices this Vemlin ways because that's the reason why usually they hire security guards to protect them because they know that they will become a target of the bad guys. Based on the article Bandwagon Snob and Vemlin Effect in the Theory of Consumer Demand written by Harvey Libenstein, it has received some criticism from McCormick. He basically states that Libenstein did not really have a clear understanding of the Vemlin Effect since he notices that it lacked footnotes and references. References. And Ve Levenstein only understand that conspicuous consumption has only price dimension in it. He did not include the psychological and sociological elements of it. Because if Levenstein did include those as the determinants of conspicuous consumption, then he would not have been able to bring forward his idea of the, the bandwagon effect as somehow distinct from the concept of conspicuous consumption. The snob effect is known for using someone's insecurity against them and this is usually used by sellers. They take advantage of this snob effect. Now how does this work? The retailer would first challenge or question the consumer's social status by implying slight insults and mild rejection. Later, the retailer would offer another deal to the consumer and of course the consumer will agree to that price because they are so eager to re-establish their standing in the social hierarchy. This causes the consumer to behave in a self-destructive purchasing behavior behavior because they tend to get manipulated and tricked into making economic decisions that would not be considered rational as it is not in their best interest to buy that particular goods and services because it's too expensive, it's overpriced. But due to the snob effect, these consumers would still buy it because they want to be a part of that group, that higher social hierarchy group and because of that, they buy these overpriced products. Firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows human beings to enjoy good things in this way. It is stated in the Quran Surah Al-Muluk verse 15 which means Islam encouraged people to work and earn a living and to travel in order to seek provision. Muslim therefore should realize that it is important for each Muslim to fully comprehend the concept of acquiring wealth or spending it but within Islamic ruling. But also Allah has warned in the Quran Surah Al-Nisa verse 38 well, so basically it is forbidden to spend number one beyond what is the cultural norm for his socio-economic class. Number two, to adorn self with luxurious items. Number three, to boost one's status in the community. Number four, conspicuous consumption. Number five, for the purpose of showing off to people. Other earlier scholars have warned us not to consume conspicuously. One of them, named al Dimashki, warns against indulgence in pleasure because the consumption of others can affect one's choice in spending, as explained from a teammate earlier. This is because the focus of these people is to obtain status and honor. Therefore, he spent on community that give him little functional utility. But others seem to look up to him. Al Dimashki, in his book, laid out five principles to managing wealth. The fifth one, as for expanding wealth, he said that the seller should take precautionary against five factors, namely niggardliness, spitefistlessness, intemperance, authenticiousness, and bad management. Conspicuous consumption has a correlation between rise and falls of a man and civilization. A scholar named Ibn Khaldun explained this relationship when he outlined the five stage theory of a dynasty, specifically in the third stage. The third stage is a period of rest and self indulgence. For example, he collect tax in order to support his increasing lavish expenditure and lofty monument before they reach the stage of luxury and prosperity. They get addicted, very much concerned to the luxury, and it has been historically proven that luxury and prosperity corrupted the heart, thus weakened the strength of human soul to sustain good leadership and governance in civilization. It is stated in the Quran, Surah Arum, verse 9, to Possibilities in consumption and spending with regard to the income earned. A man may spend at first for his consumption to satisfy his basic need. If he has success, he may save. He also can hoard his saving in gold, silver, and other jewelries. Take in mind, this is not for the purpose of show off. He also may invest his saving into production either by establishing new business or joining another company. In Islamic economic system, the forbidden of such consumption has solved a lot of things. Mainly, it eliminated the different electoral summation of individual demand curve to the market demand curve. It also closed the door to false advertising initiated by firms who want to take advantage of the bandwagon effect. And a psychological gap can be also reduced 
since there is no superior inferior relationship or difference in classes. In conclusion, an Islamic rational man should limit his consumption within the level which satisfies his need and according to standard of living in his country. He should not incite and provoke jealousy and inferiority among the poor through demonstration of wealth. Islam has taught the believers to be vigilant and careful with his wealth and in society, everyone has the right to be respected.